Yo, what's going on guys? And today I want to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves and why you guys should be excited for this squad. Leandro Balamaro, yes, the R's in time, is coming over, okay? It's basically official. And I think this team is actually a lot deeper and Chris Finch, I believe, is going to be a Coach of the Year candidate, okay? I truly, truly do believe that is going to be a coach of the year candidate so before we start today's video i'd love to hear those beautiful comments down below in the comment section so let's get right into this and talk about what i gotta say okay so look first thing that we need to talk about why we should be excited with training camp less than two weeks away the season's just over a month out okay people need to be happy about this and look last season was a nightmare for Carl Anthony Towns, and he's about to be refocused. The last two years really have been a nightmare. Injuries, heartbreak, all of it, okay? And understandably, basketball has taken a back seat in his mind, I think, for the past two seasons. And I think this year, he's coming in as a menace, okay? And he averaged 24.8 points, 10.6 rebounds, and about five assists a game, while I think not totally being there, okay? Mentally, he wasn't 100% focused till the end of the season. The season and this year we've seen him work diligently on his game on his craft all summer long and i think he's just focused he wants his legacy to continue to be here in minnesota and to show that this team can be a winner with him car anthony towns was starting to take off by the end of the 2020 2020 to 2021 season and he showed that he is the personality and presence of someone you want to be your franchise cornerstone and with a full summer of actual workouts and skill workouts and all that stuff and just developing report with Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell, and Carly Anthony Towns will do this man wonders. And I really think Carl Anthony, not Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards could be most improved player of the year candidate if he averages the 25 points a game. He's averaging like 23 and a half points, seven rebounds, five assists, and a steal and a half and almost a block a game during the last month of the season. If he can do that full year, most improved player of the year, without a doubt. And one of the things, look, Chris Finch and Gerson Rosas has spent the offseason addressing one of the main issues on this team. And that issue was defense, okay? And it begins and ends with defense, okay? Scoring, this team can score and shoot. And look, under Finch, the offense improved wonders, but the defense actually got worse, okay? The Wolves ranked 29th in defensive efficiency, and after he took over and was giving up 116 points per 100 possessions which were was not good okay and look i think what this is going to do is i think this team can do something look they tapped elston turner to take over the defense once vanderpool left and i think turner has said some good stuff. Turner said earlier this week was to get the Wolves to run back on defense with the same enthusiasm they have running to offense in transition. If they can do that, then I think they can be way better. It's just like a lot of the good players who are really good at scoring on this team run back on offense and are like, yeah, let's go on offense. But then they run back on defense. Like, mm, I don't really care. Okay. And the other thing is this team is they have bodies to rebound. It's just they don't try to rebound. So the Wolves don't have to be a top 10 defensive team, but if they can make themselves middle of the pack with the offensive capability while they're probably going to be the fastest paced team in the league, then I think that if they're somewhat in the teens, that's an enormous improvement from last year. Coupled with the offense that's going to be taking huge strides this year, I think this team has the recipe to be in the play-in slash playoff conversation. And the logical starting five for me is D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, Vander... Vanderbilt and Carl Anthony Towns. I think that's as about as balanced of a lineup you can put out on the floor with Malik Beasley being a six man of the year candidate coming off the bench averaging I bet you close to 20 points and look JD McDaniels has been rumored to be playing more small forward and McDaniels ability to be a two-way player is huge and that's and if he puts in the work and he gains some muscle and is closer to 200 pounds I think that's great and then you have Jared Vanderbilt starting with Josh Okoge off the bench would make things a little hard for Naz Reed. So you could argue maybe Jaden McDaniels be the starting power forward with Vanderbilt being the backup and Okogi starting because then you need shooters around Okogi to be successful. So I think 
there are going to be times that I think Malik Beasley it could be unhappy coming off the bench, but if he tells him, look, you're going to be sixth man of the year, I think Beasley could be comfortable playing that Lou Williams role, okay? Beasley was asked about this last season if he was going to be cool playing off the role, and he says, essentially, all he cares about is winning, okay? It, he's already gotten his bread, so all he cares about is winning, and last year he was very productive offensively. Malik Beasley sh scored 19.6 points per game and shot 39.9% from the field, okay? And he's got a long way to go defensively, but he's the floor spacer that the Wolves have desperately needed. And I think the second unit, if the starting unit is going to be, like I said, Carl Anthony Towns, Vanderbilt, Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, and D'Angelo Russell, I expect the backup unit to be Patrick Beverly, Malik Beasley, Torian Prince at power forward, Naz Reed at center, and then the small, small forward backup position behind Jaden McDaniels, to be by committee with Josh Okogie, Leandro Balmaro, and Jake Lehman taking turns being the backup small forward depending on the lineup. If they need shooting, you put Lehman in or Leandro Balmaro. If you need defense, you put Josh Okogie. Or if you need a balanced guy and a secondary ball handler, you put Leandro Balmaro. So don't be surprised by the end of the season you see Leandro Balmaro play a lot more minutes than he does in the beginning of the year. Be, don't be surprised if he has some DMPs at the beginning of the year. But once he starts taking those minutes away from Okogi and Lehman, I really think Leon Balamaro could be the primary backup small forward and secondary playmaker with Pat Beverly for this team, okay? So that's my thoughts right there. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. That's it. I think this team will be good. But yeah, we're done. So I'm going to go hang out with my mom. She's visiting me.